Everyone knows the legend of America's big boy, the world's largest steam locomotive built to bend mountains to its will. But almost nobody realizes that, at the very moment Big Boy ruled the West, a British creation emerged in secret. The BR Standard Class 9F, a 1950s behemoth designed to match raw power under impossible odds. It bent tight curves on tracks a full two feet narrower than Big Boy's. The 9F defied every British limitation, and yet most people have never heard its story. How did British engineers build a rival steam monster? And why did history almost erase its triumph? The answer upends everything we think we know about railway supremacy. Across the American West, the Union Pacific Big Boy stands as a monument to ambition. Built between 1941 and 1944, these towering locomotives stretched over 132 feet from coupler to coupler, weighing in at more than 600 tons with their tenders. Their sheer size was only part of the story. Each big boy delivered more than 6,000 horsepower, an attractive effort of 135,375 pounds, enough to pull 3,600-ton freight trains over the punishing grades of Sherman Hill and the Wasatch Range. No helper engines, no compromises. Just one machine, built to conquer the continent's longest, steepest railroads. Big Boy didn't just move freight, it moved the imagination. Rail fans and children alike lined the tracks to watch these giants thunder past. Newspapers gave them front-page treatment. Even decades after steam vanished from daily service, the Big Boy's legend only grew. Today, eight of the original 25 survive, displayed in museums and parks across the United States. One, number 4014, has been painstakingly restored to working order, drawing crowds wherever it runs. For many, Big Boy defines what a steam locomotive should be, bold, brawny, and unstoppable. It is the measuring stick for power, the icon against which all challengers are judged. Any claim of a rival, especially from a nation known for narrow tracks and modest clearances, seems almost unthinkable. And yet, as the story of the British challenger unfolds, the scale of the contest becomes clear. The British answer to America's steam colossus arrived in the form of the BR Standard Class 9F. Conceived and brought to life under the direction of Robert Riddles, chief mechanical engineer of British Railways, the 9F was built for a nation still recovering from war, short on resources, and facing a rapidly changing future. Between 1954 and 1960, British workshops produced 251 of these powerful locomotives, making the 9F not only Britain's last mainline steam class, but also its most numerous heavy freight design of the post-war era. Riddles, already renowned for his wartime locomotive work, saw an urgent need for a new kind of engine, something versatile, fuel efficient, and capable of hauling the heaviest loads the British network could throw at it. The result was a locomotive that stood apart from anything the country had seen before. The 9F's long, low silhouette and 10 driving wheels made an immediate impression. But its real strength lay in the way it fit immense power into a frame that could navigate Britain's tight clearances and winding tracks. The first units rolled out of Crewe and Swindon works in the mid-1950s just as British Railways was preparing for a new era of diesel and electric traction. Yet for a brief window, the 9F reigned as the ultimate expression of British steam engineering, a machine that could move mountains of coal, iron ore, and freight across the country, and do so with a grace and efficiency that defied its size. At the heart of the story stands Robert Riddles, a man determined to prove that steam's best days were not yet over. His vision, stamped into every rivet and wheel of the 9F, would be tested on tracks that had never seen anything like it. Nothing about the British rail network invited giants. If anything, the system seemed built to keep them out. The loading gauge, the invisible envelope every train must fit inside, stood at just 13 feet tall, 
a full three feet shorter than American standards. Tunnels, bridges, and platforms pressed in from every side, leaving no room for wasted space or oversized ambitions. Track curves wound tightly through towns and countryside, some with radii as sharp as 400 feet, forcing even ordinary locomotives to squeal and groan. The rails themselves were lighter, the sleepers closer together, and the clearances so precise that a careless design could wedge a locomotive in place like a cork in a bottle. Every mile of track was a constraint. A machine too heavy would shatter the rails, too long, and it would lock itself into a curve, unable to move forward or back. Too tall, and it would scrape the roof of a tunnel or collide with a signal gantry. The British network demanded discipline, not brute force, a world where every inch and every ton had to be justified. Yet somehow, in the middle of this maze, the 9F appeared. A locomotive with 10 driving wheels, a massive boiler, and a frame that seemed to defy the laws of British railway physics. It was as if someone had tried to squeeze a battleship into a canal. The paradox was impossible to ignore. How could a machine of this size, with this much power, even function on tracks designed for restraint? The answer would require a level of engineering creativity and risk that few had ever attempted. Robert Riddles and his team faced a puzzle that seemed unsolvable. How to build a locomotive with the muscle of a mountain hauler, yet gentle enough for British rails and the sharpest bends? Their answer began with the 2 10 0 wheel arrangement, a rare sight in Britain, chosen for its ability to spread weight across five driving axles. This kept the axle load down to about 15 tons, a figure just within the limits for most British routes. But length alone threatened disaster on the country as tight, twisting tracks. To solve this, Riddles specified a flangeless center driving wheel a bold move that let the locomotive slide through curves as tight as 400 feet in radius. The second and fourth driving wheels carried only shallow flanges, further easing the strain on both track and wheels. The boiler was no less ambitious. Working at 250 pounds per square inch, it delivered a steady supply of superheated steam to two large outside cylinders, each measuring 20 inches by 28 inches. The firebox sat high above the rear coupled wheels, its wide shallow grate designed to burn British coal efficiently within the strict height limits of the loading gauge. Innovation did not stop there. Some engines experimented with Franco Crosti feed water heaters, an Italian idea meant to wring more heat from exhaust gases by preheating water before it entered the boiler. Others received Giesel ejectors, a multi-jet exhaust system that promised better smoke box draft and small gains in fuel economy. While not all these experiments proved worthwhile, they reflected a willingness to push boundaries and test new ideas in search of more power and efficiency. Every detail, from the Walshart's valve gear to the precise balancing of reciprocating parts, was calculated to squeeze maximum output from a locomotive that could neither be too heavy nor too long. Riddle's engineering choices allowed the Class 9F to deliver near big boy performance on paper and in practice, without ever breaking the rules of British Rail. The result was a machine that looked improbable, but worked with a quiet, relentless power. On paper, the Union Pacific Big Boy and the BR Standard Class 9F occupy different worlds. The numbers tell the story in stark relief. Big Boy delivered a thundering 6,290 horsepower at the drawbar, measured in official tests at 41 miles per hour, while dragging trains weighing 3,600 tons up mountain grades. Its tractive effort reached 135,375 pounds force, a figure that dwarfed anything else in regular service. The locomotive itself tipped the scales at over 600 tons with its tender, stretching out to 132 feet from end to end. The 9F, born into a much smaller frame, produced 1,500 indicated horsepower in controlled plant tests at Rugby. 
In real-world terms, that translated to about 1,350 to 1,600 horsepower at the drawbar, roughly a quarter of Big Boy's output, but achieved with just a third of the mass and half the length. The 9F's tractive effort stood at 39,667 pounds force, a record for British steam. In 1982, preserved 92203 Black Prince set a British record by hauling a 2,178-ton train, more than double its design goal and the heaviest, heaviest ever moved by a UK steam locomotive. Speed was another surprise. Where Big Boy was designed for 70 miles per hour, but usually ran slower under load, the 9F could reach 80 or even 90 miles per hour in testing, thanks to its lighter construction and efficient balancing. Coal and water consumption also told a different story. Big Boy burned through up to 22,000 pounds of coal per hour at full power, while the 9F managed with just 4,000 to 5,000 pounds an order of magnitude difference reflecting the scale of their respective networks. Comparing the two side by side, the British 9F did not match Big Boy for sheer force, but in terms of power to weight and efficiency, it punched far above its class. Within the cramped, winding boundaries of Britain's railways, these numbers were not just impressive, they were almost unbelievable. Big Boy's domain stretched for hundreds of miles, built on the idea that the only way to conquer the landscape was through overwhelming strength. The locomotive's role was singular, to haul the heaviest trains over the longest distances through mountain ranges where failure meant gridlock across a continent. Every design decision reflected a culture of abundance, of land, of resources, of ambition. In America, the challenge was scale, the solution was scale, and scale. Across the Atlantic, the 9F was born into a world shaped by scarcity and precision. Britain's railways wound through cities, villages, and countryside, hemmed in by stone bridges and narrow tunnels. The 9F's job was never just about brute force. It was tasked to move coal from the mines of Wales, iron ore from the Northeast, and general freight across a network where space was a luxury and adaptability was survival. On some days, a 9F might drag a mile-long mineral train at 35 miles per hour. On others, it was pressed into passenger service, reaching speeds that surprised even its designers. The difference in philosophy ran deeper than numbers. American railroads could afford to build bigger, heavier, and more specialized machines. British engineers, led by Robert Riddles, had to extract every ounce of efficiency from limited space and materials. The 9F's versatility, its ability to handle mixed traffic, tight curves, and demanding schedules was a direct answer to Britain's unique constraints. Riddles saw the 9F as the ultimate test of whether steam power could still serve a nation on the verge of change. Efficiency mattered above all. Comparing these locomotives by horsepower alone misses the point. Big Boy was a sledgehammer. The 9F was a scalpel, designed to do more with less, to thrive where size and raw strength would have failed. Each machine reflected the country that built it, one vast and unconstrained, the other compact and endlessly inventive. The rivalry is not just about power, but about the very idea of what a locomotive should be. On the climb to Shap Summit, the 9F faced one of Britain's toughest proving grounds. In 1954, a crew logged their run in the cab as they hauled 900 tons of coal up the long, punishing gradient. The driver's notes read simply, power to spare, quiet running, cab comfortable but intense heat. For the men at the controls, this was a new experience, an engine that did not thrash or struggle but settled into its work with a calm, relentless pull. Workshop records from the period back up those impressions. Maintenance logs show the standard 9F locomotives handled high mileage mineral service with few unscheduled repairs. Crews praised their ability to steam well, even on poor coal, and many engines racked up 200,000 miles before withdrawal. The consensus at Shed 
and on the footplate was clear, proving that British engineering could match American levels of power and durability. Yet the story was not without its headaches. The franco crosty boiler experiment intended to save fuel produced a wave of corrosion issues. Workshop teams at Crewe and Swindon spent hours battling rust and leaks, and by 1962 most Crosty variants had been rebuilt to standard form. For the core fleet, however, the outcome was more positive. The 9F delivered on its promise, demonstrating that British design could combine substantial power with genuine reliability, even if only for a brief window in time. In 1955, British Railways unveiled the Modernization Plan, a sweeping policy that promised a future powered by diesel and electric locomotives. Boardroom minutes from that year reveal a stark new reality. Steam, no matter how advanced, would be phased out as soon as possible. By December 1958, the British Transport Commission set a timetable for withdrawal, locking in the fate of the Class 9F and its steam siblings. Internal memos capture the tension. Engineers like Robert Riddles argued that steam's proven reliability and Britain's homegrown coal supply still made economic sense, but the mood had shifted. The board's decision was final. Orders trickled down to the sheds with no further investment in steam, no major overhauls, and a strict schedule for scrapping. The first class 9Fs began disappearing from rosters as early as 1964. By 1968, nearly every member of the class had been sent to the Cutter's Torch, some after less than a decade in service. The modernization plan did not just end an era, it erased the chance for Britain's last steam giants to prove their worth on their own terms. Nine members of the 9F class escaped the Torch, a small band of survivors from a fleet that once numbered 251. Each carries a different story. 92220 Evening Star, the last steam locomotive built for British Railways, rests today at the National Railway Museum in York, a symbol saved through sheer determination. In 1965, as scrap merchants circled, railway workers and enthusiasts mounted a grassroots campaign. Letters flooded British Rail's headquarters. Volunteers organized petitions and raised funds refusing to let the final steam giant vanish without a trace. Their efforts paid off, and Evening Star became the first British locomotive preserved from new, not by accident but by design. Other nine F-class locomotives found second lives on Heritage Railways. 92203 Black Prince, rescued by preservationist David Shepard, broke records in 1982 by hauling the heaviest train ever moved by a British steam engine. The remaining survivors, scattered across preserved lines, serve as living reminders of what might have been if Britain's steam era had lingered. If dieselization had been delayed, or if public sentiment had matched the passion of those early campaigners, the 9F class story could have filled more chapters. Instead, its legacy lives on in the hands of volunteers and in the memory of a nation that almost let its last steam monsters slip away. Steam giants like the 9F prove that innovation is not just a matter of size. It is about meeting impossible challenges, even in overlooked corners. Today, as railways seek greener, smarter power, the lessons of these forgotten machines echo louder than ever. Constraints fuel creativity. The next breakthrough may not roar across continents, but history shows it will never arrive quietly. Share your thoughts below. Where do you see Rail's next leap coming from?